a lot of people think research is, is sitting in a chemistry lab and working on a pipette or like microbiology, but UMBC has definitely opened my eyes to what research really looks like when it comes to not just being in a lab, but working on a computer, working with GIS and like landscape data, or talking to people and really getting to know their perspective on certain things from a social science perspective. We're doing surveys and interviews and seeing how that actually changes, not just how a system works, but also why people do what they do. There's just a lot of available talent here and we're able to really capitalize on that. UMBC is very well built for doing research at the same time, we're an R1 university, and it's there's a lot of available resources for helping you actually be able to juggle a job and school at the same time. Some of the few, I think, very cool and unique research opportunities um, on UMBC's campus is what we call SARA, which is not a name, it's uh, an acronym for the Conservation Environmental Research Area. It's where not just graduate students, but actually undergraduates within the Geography and Environmental Systems Department or even other departments can go in and research in different ways. When I came to UMBC to pursue my master's, I've seen these kinds of robots only on the YouTube. So I was more excited to actually work on them when I saw them at this lab and the uh, professor gave us a lot of uh, liberty and freedom to actually research. If you consider 90% of the research, people usually use virtual worlds. But if you go with the real world uh, robot, you will have a different challenges and different research. We're lucky enough to have not one, uh, not two, but three spots, which I don't see anywhere else. And that's allowed us to actually go towards goals of swarm robotics and things like that, where without those resources, we wouldn't be able to explore these types of questions. There's a lot of different techniques that I use to travel with. And so this includes basic cardinal directions, mental mapping, remembering different routes, and things like that, listening to sound cues, using those to orient myself, asking people for direction. I think it's really difficult to do a tactile map correctly. Um, it takes a lot of feedback from the population that's actually using them, which is typically blind or visually impaired people. For so many reasons, uh, maps are so different tactilely. And I think when done right, they definitely can be very helpful and can give us a great big picture idea and sometimes a detailed idea of how to navigate. So UMBC is kind of my study area and I am focused on stormwater control measures or uh, natural landscaping like rain gardens, stormwater ponds, facilities that kind of mimic the natural hydrology to help uh, decrease and slow down stormwater when it rains. I'm looking at how UMBC's campus, our stormwater management plan actually impacts our local water quality. Before uh, becoming a graduate student, I wasn't really aware of how much or like what research really looked like in different fields. And I think UMBC has a lot of cool opportunities to be able to see research in different ways.